May nga ka sinyo tanan. Good morning. Good morning yun sinyo tanan. Um, so kagapon si Brother Clyder naga message sa akin. Si anong Fred anong scripture reading? And sa link ko Matthew 1, 1 to 17. After a few minutes, nagsiling siya. Nung Fred, mga genealogy, magsiling kita genealogy, mga listahan. Sing ko, o, oh, PLDT, directory. <laughs> Ay, dumdumi ko, nag-joke lang ko, nga amuna siyang reading. Kahit kung basa ako, tatod, masiling ka, anong, anong makuha, tas sasiling ang mga listahan, sasiling ka Domingo, man, no? Ano, anong message ang makuha, tadari, kay wala mang ganit, the instructions nga makita kita sa 1 to 17 regarding our Christian faith. Pero, uh, sang naga tuon ako, kag sang uh, ginplastar kong minsay, na-realize ko na kadamo-damo gali sa makuha sa sininga uh, 17 verses. No? And it's so rich. Sing ko, I, I didn't expect na amul. Sang gin-assign ni sa akong sing ko, hapo, sang na. Pero sang nagtuon ako, sing ko, I didn't expect na I will do a lot of back work. No, uh, magsing kita back work research, no? Background, 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 no? Kay grabe ang listahan, no? So, masining kita uh, let us see how 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 the Lord will amaze us with these 17 verses, no? Sininga aga. And I invite you to join me in praying uh, sa aton nga uh, uh, pagpamati sang pulong sang Ginoo. Hamay na mo nagapasalamat di kami bangod sa mga opportunities para ya sini na makatipon kami as a church para magapamati sa imo nga puno. These past days, damo na mga tingog ang amon nabatian sa telebisyon, sa internet, sa mga neighbors namon sa mon panimalay. And uh, most of them they don't carry the good news. They don't carry news that lift us up. Tanan probably kalabana na amon mabatian sa mon palibot are things that cause us to worry and cause us to forget especially as we look forward to the celebration of Christmas. And to today, we pray that you will speak to us through your word and through me, your servant, Heavenly Father, that I will stand here worthy to deliver your word to your people. Heavenly Father, take care of all of us as we listen to your word. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Sa prayer, nagambago, take care to all of us, no? Okay. Ang buto, dugay naman ko sa inyo, no? Kilala niyo naman ako. Kaga naanda na ako magtindog sa tubangan sa mga tao. Pero na-notice ko gid na may mga times gid na daw gin, ginadakop ko sa uh, kulba, no? Uh, uh, probably because, lain na kulba, no? Probably because na sala ang mga deliver ko. Or probably because ang ako na health, ginahapo ko, muna, no? But the Lord will take care of us this morning. So are we ready? The title of today's message is The Christ of Christmas, The Christ of the Covenant. This is a new series, ato, no? Ang, uh, The Christ of Christmas, and we will continue to listen Christmas-themed messages all throughout the month of December. This morning, ang aton gid, no? Nga underlying uh, idea, nga matunan, before you leave, is this sentence. Jesus is the long-awaited Christ who will bless and rule his people forever. Jesus is the long-awaited Christ who will bless and rule his people forever. Perhaps you wonder if he is the long-awaited Christ. Uh, by the way, no, uh, perhaps iban sa aton wala kabalo na ang Christ hindi na siya family name. Okay, but it's a title given to Jesus, which means the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Chosen One, who will deliver God, uh, God's people. So, uh, so Jesus is the long-awaited Christ who will bless and rule His people forever. And there are three things that we will also learn. Halindra sa inang idea, unaged, is that Jesus is the fulfilled promise Christ. Is the fulfillment of the promise Christ. Again, Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise Christ. Secondly, he will rule his people with righteousness forever. And thirdly, he will bring eternal blessings to his people. Christmas is a celebration of fulfilled promise in Jesus Christ. Fulfilled promise. 
which means natuman, na accomplish, na meet, okay, na fulfill. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, what was, what was once a beautiful, harmonious, blessed relationship with their Creator was shattered and destroyed by their disobedience. The consequences of their actions greatly affected generations of humanity until now. We were cut off and separated from God, and a life of full blessedness ceases. Suddenly, a new vocabulary is introduced to humanity. Pain, suffering, death. Man's history is filled with this new reality, and sadly, we all have been experiencing this. But God, in His great mercy, have planned redemption and deliverance for humanity. Speaking to Satan, God says in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. In that verse, that verse is the first gospel declared in the Bible. That an offspring, or the seed, or the child of a woman will defeat Satan. This is the promise of God. A covenant he made with humanity. And throughout time, God has made a covenant to his chosen people. But how are we to understand what a covenant is? Every time no magsaling kita, may Lord Supper kita, nasumiara kita, covenant fellowship. O covenant member ka sa life spring. Sometimes, kung pamangkotong kita sinaguro, hindi kita kabalukon ano meaning sa covenant. But what is a covenant? A covenant is a relationship between two partners who make binding promises to each other and work together to reach a common goal. They are often accompanied by oaths, signs, and ceremonies. Covenants define obligations and commitments, but they are different from a contract because they are relational and personal. Think of marriage. A husband and wife choose to enter into a formal relationship, binding themselves to one another in lifelong faithfulness and devotion. They then work as partners to reach a common goal like building a life or raising children together. That is a covenant. May ara kamo contract, may ara kamo agreement, may ara kamo relationship, kag may ara kamo goals to work together. That is a covenant. Now, covenant relationship, relationships are found all throughout the Bible. There are personal covenant, covenants between two individuals like David and Jonathan, political covenants between two kings or nations like King Solomon and King Hiram, Legal covenants with the nation, such as the laws about freeing Hebrew slaves, and so forth. So entering into covenants was a major part of what it meant to live in the ancient Near East. So God partnered with humans through a structure they already understood. So naiintindihan niyo kung ano ka importante ang ginatawag na being a covenant member of a church. No? But then that's a different topic. It, it just speaks about an agreement, a relationship between two parties that you commit to the Lord that you will work together you know, to advance the kingdom of God. Let's start with this one. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promised Christ. Throughout the history of God's chosen people, the Israelites, they experienced what it is to be enslaved and delivered, what it is to be defeated and victorious, what it is to obey and be blessed and to rebel and be punished. And while these have been happening, God's promise of the Messiah or the Chosen One is gradually being fulfilled. He will be their ultimate Redeemer, Deliverer, and Savior. And the Bible is filled with prophecies concerning the birth of Christ. In Micah chapter 5, verse 2, it says, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Another one. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous, 
and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9. 9. Another one. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's in Isaiah 7.14. And the, and the prophecy concerning the suffering Messiah. Isaiah 53, 5. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with, and with his wounds, we are healed. We are, taking our, we are taking our message from the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew is a Jew and he wrote the gospel to his fellow Jews. By beginning the book with a genealogy of Jesus Christ, he wants us to show the lineage of Jesus, which proves that he is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, promised by God and long been waited for. In the book, Matthew highlighted Jesus as a true Messiah, Emmanuel, God incarnate with his people, Son of God, King of Israel, and Lord of the Church. So we see here, Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise of Messiah who will deliver his people from their sins. Verse one of Matthew started with this phrase, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Those are three powerful statements declaring that Una, Jesus is the Christ. He is the one that you've been long waiting that, that you have been waiting for for quite some time. He is the son of David and he is the son of Abraham. Powerful claims. Let's proceed with the next one. Jesus will rule his people with righteousness forever. Now, genealogies or our version of the family tree, Munashang genealogy na do family tree, is important to the Jews because it traces one's ancestry, ang iyagin halinan. For Matthew and his Jewish readers, it is important to trace the line of Jesus so they could validate the claims being made. For it is known to the Jews that the Messiah should come from the line of David even as far back as Abraham, the father of the chosen nation. So, when Matthew started this book with a book of the ge genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, it presents Jesus as coming from the lineage of two of the most significant personalities in biblical history, Abraham and David. What does it mean to be called the son of David? Well, this phrase was used by Matthew several times in connection to Jesus. It meant that Jesus belongs to the royal line of David, who was Israel's greatest king. It also meant that Jesus is the rightful heir to the throne of David. God made a covenant with David that someone will be raised from his line someday to reign on his throne forever. 2 Samuel 7:11 11-16 the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of man, with the stripes of the sons of man. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The portrait presented was not just a return to the glory days of Israel's monarchy under David and Solomon. It was a promise for the restoration and renewal of all creation. When the wolf will live with the lamb, they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So we see here in the second point that Jesus Christ 
is the fulfillment of God's promise of a king who will reign his people forever. And we have been longing for someone to really rule, for, rule us with righteousness, right? Gusto ta, righteous leader again. But we cannot find it among humans. Only Christ can fulfill it, and he has already fulfilled it. Thirdly, Jesus will bring eternal blessing to his people and those who are not Israelites. Now, while David's name tells us that Jesus was royalty, Abraham's name pointed to a belonging amongst the people of God. Another description Matthew gave to Jesus is the son of Abraham. When God called Abraham to leave his land and lead a people God has chosen, he made a covenant to Abraham. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. By linking Jesus to Abraham, Matthew is not only telling the readers that Jesus belongs to the people of Israel, but he also brings the reader's attention back to the promise of God's rescue plan for the world. He wants us to see that Jesus is the long-awaited son of Abraham who will bring God's blessing to all humanity. Now, God's salvation plan also includes those who are not Israelites. Looking back to the genealogy, five women are mentioned there, which is unusual because genealogies usually contain the names of the fathers or men only. What is further strange in the list is that these women are not Israelites and do not have a good reputation and or having a public image. Okay, thank you, Arina. Ang mga genealogies, pala no, sang pag-bisita ko sa Amon, sa Amlan, na-meet ko ako na tito. Ang tsura yan daw si Papa Gid. Maghambal siya daw si Papa Gid. Ang build, paano siya magbayo, paano siya magkatlaw daw si Papa Gid. Ang naglain lang sa iya is that hindi siya lapad ilong. No? Okay. <laughs> sa muna nang lain siya, hindi siya lapad ilong. Kutanan, amugid. Mamati lang ko sang story yan. No? Paano siya nagtupa sa Zamboanga? Kanami mag sa mga storya, sa mga tigulang. Wala kay makita mo gitang history. No? And history is very important. No? Siguro kung i-trace na ito ng ato na family tree. Ah, so, Papa, no? Sino ni Papa? Si Filipe. Sino nga lang ni Papa ni Filipe? Naas na lang da. Huwag na po kabalo. So kay Mama. So si Mama, nga lang niya, nga lang sa Mama ya si Eva, nga lang sa Mama ya si Maria, and then after sina sino. So I, I do not know kung pila sa aton diri nga ginalista niyo, ginang inyo nga mga lol, kaluluhan. Okay? No? Ang buti kung may arak mo sa family tree. That's really important, no? You know that? And usually, sa ina ng mga family tree, madrawing ta, may mga sanga-sanga, no? May mga ara, gina, membro nga sa atong family tree na atong doon na huya, kitabla. Kahit tungod may nahimo siya na skandal, or adik-adik, or ginguba iya kabuhi, doon na huya kita, di ba? Pero sa genealogy, naging lista ni Matthew, may limagit, Okay? babae and uh, may mga kamalamalahan okay so uh, before kita mag sa mga kamalamalahan ma inom tayo ng tubig <laughs> okay muna inom muna siyang bago sa inyo okay
Una si Tamar. Well, she entered the royal bloodline of uh, the Messiah by disguising herself as a prostitute and seducing her father-in-law, Judah, so he would make her pregnant. Ibang sa atin, Ay, ala, tuwag ka. May amuna sila, pamilya. Ay, amuna na. May ang kita mamati sa mga scandals, no? Okay. Si Tamar. She entered the royal bloodline of the Asi Rehab. She had been a prostitute, a Gentile, a Canaanite. She and her family were the only survivors of Israel's conquests of Jericho because she hid the Jewish spies and helped them escape. And once integrated into Israel, she married Salmon and became King David's great, great grandmother. Ay tuod ka. May aragali sa linya ni Jesus nga amuna. Grabe no. Amuni siya ang list sang ay tuod ka. Okay. Sige. <laughs> Ikatatlo. Si Ruth. She was a Gentile. May singkita ka ni Gentile, hindi siya Israelite. Okay. A Moabite. Kaya ang race ni, 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 ni Ruth, Moabite. Okay, yeah. Ang iya ni ancestry had its origin in the incest committed between Lot and his oldest daughter. Ruth's people were polytheistic pagans. Damo sila, Dios, Dios. And through personal tragedy and loyalty, she wound up at Bethlehem in the arms of Boaz. What's, uh, what's surprising was that Ruth has even a name in the Bible, the book of Ruth. Ay, tuod ka. Ari. Bathsheba. Ay, ari na. Okay? Now, she was the wife of Uriah. However, hindi ni siya yung nagarit-garit, ha? Kundi siya yung ginhilabtan. She suffered sexual abuse and her husband was murdered by King David. Ay, grabe. Okay? Ari. Mary. Ha? Huh? Okay. The mother of Jesus. She became pregnant with Jesus before her wedding and the child's father was not her Betrothed, ang iya gin, gin, gin set la para sa iyang husband, who is Joseph. And uh, well, hindi ni siya scandalous, no? but in the eyes of people, it is scandalous because they, uh, hindi nila mentioned na there's a miraculous uh, uh, conception no? of Mary through the Holy Spirit. So makita, tang listahan is so messed up. Ang linya ni Jesus is so messed up. And, you know, uh, John Bloom commented beautifully on the inclusion of these women. And let me read this. All five of these women share something in common. Disgrace. These women either committed or suffered disgrace. They had tainted reputations. They likely would have endured the contempt of others. And at least the first four would have struggled with very painful, even sad memories. And here's the thing, most of us want to conceal the more disgraceful events and people in our families, but not Jesus. Iba tong ba ko sa inyo kagina? Do basta masturihan, gani ang ining a member of the family, do change topic please. Nagamutan na, di ba? Pero kung sturiante ang bata, tahan ato sa abroad, maubos lang ang bilog na ugto, damo, tama itikal. But not Jesus. He goes out of his way here to draw attention to these women whose very names call to mind scandalous things. Why? I think to remind us before Matthew even begins the story of his birth, why he came. Even in the genealogies, God weaves his grace. He loves to redeem sinners. He loves to produce something beautiful out of sad family backgrounds. He loves to make foreigners his children. He loves to reconcile his enemies. He loves to make all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the promised blessing which flows eternally 
to God's chosen people and to the people of other nations. This ultimate blessing is eternal life in Jesus Christ. This is the Christ of Christmas, Jesus, the promised Messiah sent by God the Father to save us from a life of unblessedness, to free us from the things that enslave us, to redeem us from the deep pit of debt, and to restore a broken relationship. This is Jesus Christ, the promised King, who will rule over us with truth and righteousness, with power and might, giving us peace and security forever and ever. This is Jesus Christ, the promised blesser, who through him flows an ending blessing and eternal life. This is the Christ of Christmas, Jesus, the ultimate fulfiller and keeper of the covenant. Christmas is a celebration of fulfilled promise in Jesus Christ. How are we then to celebrate Christmas? Brethren, celebrate Christmas this year with humility and gratitude to God. Think of what could have been your life if you were not saved by Jesus. Be grateful always for what Christ did for you. Secondly, celebrate Christmas with peace and confidence. Remember that Jesus is King. No power on earth could destroy Him or His plans. Do not be anxious. Trust God who reigns. Thirdly, celebrate it with a heart of joyful generosity. Let our hands be wide open to give especially those who are in need. In Christ, we experience grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing, and this could motivate us all the more to give abundantly and cheerfully. Earlier today, Brother Meal started by reading Isaiah 9, 2, and, 2, and I'll continue by reading verse 6. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That is a big reason for us to celebrate Christmas. With meaning. And I invite you now to come to God in prayer and join me in praying. God our Father, what is Christmas without your Son, Jesus? What is Christmas if we choose to listen to ourselves rather than the wisdom that comes from your word? What is Christmas if we choose to seek our own rather than the interests of others? What is Christmas if we are always worried, anxious, afraid, fearful? What is Christmas? if we love the world rather than the Word incarnate, who is Jesus? What is Christmas if we enjoy temporal blessings rather than abundant, overflowing, never-ending flow of eternal blessings that comes from you? We thank you, our Father, for sending your only beloved Son to be the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ alone can rescue us from our own folly our own selfishness, our own fears, our own ways of material and temporal enjoyment. In Jesus, every promise is fulfilled, and that is one big reason we find joy and contentment in celebrating Christmas. Make our Christmas celebrations adore your Son, for in His name we pray. Amen.